Well, greetings everybody. As you see, I've got my camera kind of twisted to show you the light that I have there. I brought up on uh, previous videos, I even put little inserts in there saying, hey, watch the light, see what it does. Well, what I want to bring out today are several different topics, but all sort of, you know, revolving around the supernatural. And last night, I'll tell you, I thought it was going to be my last night, and I didn't mind, you know, I was... I was uh, quite pleased I was about to be taken out as what I really felt was going on in a dream that I had, you know, sort of like with the Matrix, if uh, Neo or one of them got killed while they were off into the Matrix, while well, they would be dead there on the chair where they were plugged into it, okay? So that's basically what was going through my mind was that I was actually going to die in my dream. And uh, it was, I know for some it would be very, very spooky. And I'm going to put this camera back to where you can see me. Now as far as the uh, light going, you know, you can see in the background, I, I don't see when the light itself dims or things of that sort. I can't see it. And I can see it out my peripheral vision, and I never notice it either. And that's why I'm keeping this picture right here like this, because I could see my face here, and I could see the bed. But here on the bed, when the light gets darker or dims, you can actually see it taking place here as well as on the wall. And it's not from lighting anywhere else. I think maybe you can, you know, you see them two little uh, crescent marks here, up in here these little two dealies that's the amount of light that comes off my camera so my camera's not really putting anything on me here it's more or less the background of the computer screen that's putting the light on my face and reflecting off the glasses and I don't know if it's going to be dimming or not during this video it might not you know just to prove a point to me or not but uh, in a video past I did actually rebuke the evil spirits, you know, if it was actually evil and wicked spirits that were doing that with my lamp. Otherwise, I said, you know, if you were a servant of Yahshua, our mighty king, you know, and you keep the laws and commandments, then, you know, you're welcome. Well, last night I had a understanding that came that, you know, everybody has a guardian malik. A lot of people call on angels, okay, but... The angels almost got me, okay? It was angels, there were demons, there were wicked and evil spirits and other spirits that attacked me in my dreams. And I guess I probably should, you know, explain what went on. I fell asleep out in the living room prior to the sun going down. And I woke up a little while after the sun had gone down. And I came in here and went to bed. Somewhere around midnight, I had a dream that I had acquired a mansion, okay? It was a, a large, older-type mansion. It was really gorgeous. I mean, the rooms were gigantic, and I walked in through the front door into a really, really big room, and down on each side of that big room, there were these entranceways to other big rooms, and there were a lot of people there. And I didn't know any of them, okay? But they were all standing around. They were talking. And I didn't really hear what they were talking about or anything because as I walked through the door, I noticed at the first entrance of the first room on the right-hand side, there was a trash can. And there were trash cans next to each of the entrances. And the trash can just jumped up in the air and started moving around. And so I rebuked the spirit that was behind it. I gave it the spiritual test, the trash can fell back to the ground, and I knew that that spirit was gone. So I kept walking up, and when we got to the next, when I got to the next doorway, the trash can came up again, and I knew it was a different spirit, and I was getting a little bit upset about it, because, well, every house I've ever moved into, when it was mine, whether through renting or whatever, but I took possession of the the house that I was in or the apartment or whatever, even this one here, I've always had to run off devils, you know, <laughs> demons and angels and such. I had to get rid of those things because they were encroaching on property that was no longer theirs to possess. I was paying for it, therefore I was the owner of it, and they had no right to be there. 
unless of course as I've explained in other videos where you have at least two of the devils two wicked and evil spirits that are around us at all times writing down everything we do everything we say how we act because you have to have at least two witnesses to put you to death everybody also has a holy malik and a lot of people don't understand what a holy malik is but in the book of Enoch it does speak of the holy malik or the holy malachim as well as also speaking of angels and I had learned the difference many many years ago what an angel is is you know Satan the devil used to be a holy malik or one of the holy malachim in plural but Satan used to be a holy malik she was a messenger of Father Yahweh and uh, you know much more if you actually do the study Satan was much more and, and one of the wisest there ever was created but then sin was found in Satan so Satan fell away and along with her she took about one-third of the holy malachim with her you know and then they were no longer holy malachim when they fell away they had to have a different title you know if you've got a sheriff and the sheriff gets busted for corruption well, he's still not the sheriff. He's called convict now, okay? So, same individual, just a different title. And Satan and the fallen holy Malachim that went off with her, following her into the lies and deceit to deceive the entire earth, became what's known today as angels. The holy messengers of Yahshua now, because our Father gave every one of the spirits to Yahshua. Satan is also owned by Yahshua, so are all the wicked and evil spirits too. However, those that did not fall with Satan are still called holy Malachim. Those are the ones that serve Yahshua, uh, some call Yeshua or Yehoshua, but they were all created by Father Yahweh at the beginning. Satan was created at the beginning, and everything was righteous. Everything our Father created was righteous until sin was found in it. And then it was no longer righteous. Of course, they like to say good, but everything was righteous. Now, they replaced the word righteous in many places for the word good. And good is just another term for God. And I know there's many out there that claim that God comes to them, you know, and, and tells them all these wonderful things about Jesus, you know, and Jesus comes to them like every day, you know, and, and talks to them, I guess, like you and I'm speaking right now, Jesus comes. And I don't doubt it a bit, but it's not Yahshua, and it's certainly not our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, our Creator. Our Creator is not going to go to anybody. He is not going to do so. If He does... He's trespassing against our king. Our king was given that job and duty as a mediator between man and our heavenly father. That's Yahshua's job in these last days, okay? Ever since our king sat on the throne and our father gave all things unto our king, our father no longer goes seeing anybody face to face. We're all just too nasty and rotten and vile. And we need to be cleaned up, and that's what Yahshua is doing. He's cleaning up a certain few who later on, after a great earthquake and everything, when Holy Spirit's poured out and the 144,000 are gathered, they're going to teach the entire earth. All nations will eventually flow to them. Please read Micah chapter 4 and Isaiah chapter 2. It'll tell you. And the whole purpose of the 144,000 is to teach all nations that flow unto us the ways of our Heavenly Father. We're going to teach His thoughts because your thoughts are not our Father's thoughts. If you're eating a pork chop or whatever, then your thoughts are certainly not our Father's thoughts, nor are your ways our Father's ways. And he says he's also going to send his law, okay? The law is already here. It's never been gone away. But that's the purpose of the 144,000 is to teach and to enforce those laws, the laws and commandments, the give or take 613 laws, which is also known as the schoolmaster, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. Romans 7.14 explains that the law is spiritual, so if you're going to be spiritual, you need to keep the laws. There's no other way but to do so. And so the point being, 
when you test the spirits, there are lying spirits, okay? There's these lying spirits that'll dress up just like Jesus Christ, whatever Jesus looks like, maybe the little faggot on the cross or whatever, the crucifix that the world thinks he looks like. When scripture actually said our king was uncomely, he, he was a rather homely looking fellow, it said nobody desired him. When they looked at him, nobody desired him, okay? He was no Dudley Do-Right. Hi, Dudley Do right here, you know, sweet Polly, you know. No, Yahshua wasn't a Dudley Do right. He didn't have the comely features in his face. His arms were probably like Arnold Schwarzenegger, of course, because he was a carpenter and such. But our king was not cute, okay? He was. He was kind of probably sort of like me, you know, something that People look at, you know, might not get repulsed to where they want to bar for anything, but, you know, they have no desire for us, unless you're an exceptionally handsome guy wanting to take someone like me along with you so the girls will look at you, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's how it is, but, of course, that's nothing to do with righteousness either. And our king was 100% righteous. He was born knowing nothing. He had no sense of righteousness or what evil was until he was eating butter and honey, which we should be doing every day. And I just wanted to bring that part up, you know, for all those that say that the Jesus is coming to them and, and telling them that all they got to do is believe. Jesus came and, and he said, all I have to do is believe. And, and God came and said, oh, all you got to do is believe in the Jesus, you know, and either of them, you know, you got to realize come from lying spirits. Again, our Heavenly Father is not going to go to any one of us. There is not one of the 144,000 that Father Yahweh is going to go visit, except through His Son. <laughs> so that means our Father is not going to come to you or me in person. Whether in a vision or a dream, He's not going to do it. You're only going to get to know about the Father through the Son, okay? By Holy Spirit, you know, and Holy Spirit's not a person. It's more like a conduit or, you know, the wiring in your house, and the only way you can get to that juice is by plugging something into an outlet. And if you don't have the right plug-in, the plug-in is the give or take 613 laws that apply to you, and the Ten Commandments, they teach you how to keep those Ten Commandments. That's your plug-in into... The electrical power in all houses today, you know, have the same opportunity with, you know, the electricity in there to plug into, except for those that are the ones that I, I really can't remember the name of them, you know, but my dad was one, you know, he didn't believe there was a creator. Later in his life, he got baptized into the Catholic Church, and I... I was what they call his godfather, and I apologized to him, and, you know, later on in his life, and I said, you know, I'm sorry, that was the worst thing I ever did to you, Dad, you know, if I would have, if I'd have known better, I wouldn't have been your godfather, you know, I certainly wouldn't have, you know, agreed to being your godfather and being there when you got baptized at a known at that time, but that was the wickedest thing I ever done against you, and I do apologize. Oh yeah, atheists, that's what it is. My dad was an atheist, and those houses that have no electricity in them, they're, just think of them as atheist homes, okay? <laughs> just, where there is no hookup for Holy Spirit whatsoever in it because of the unbelief. But all others on the earth that think they believe. Now, I got to tell you, you know, it's not that I believe. I can't say that I am a believer now in, in most of the things because I've seen these things and I know them to be true. And that's where Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and 27 comes in. Many of the scriptures talk about being a believer. You know, help us in our disbelief that we may believe in such. However, when you get past just believing... You come into that phase where you are knowing. You know. You don't have to believe it no more because you've seen it. You've dealt with it. You've been in it. It's come upon you. You know, just the same thing as all these supernatural things that take place out there. I don't believe there's a spirit world. I know there's one because they tormented me since my birth. 
And I know these spirits, when they come, they're liars, okay? They lie and they deceive. And you got all those people out there running around, you know, trying, you know, do their little paranormal experiments. Ooh, can you turn on the flashlight? If they only knew the power of those beings, okay? There were seven sons of Sceva, and Sceva was a high priest in the days around the time when Yahshua was on the earth. And the seven sons of Sceva, thinking that their daddy being the high priest, they had this authority over the devil. So they went out and tried casting out the devils out of this one fella. And, and you know, the fella says, you know, Paul, I know, and Yahshua, I know, but who are you? And, and then the fella that the demons were in, and basically what those spirits that were in the fella are, are those of the giants, or they could be the angels as well, the fallen holy Malachim, but the spirits of the giants, when the giants died, their spirits lived on. Enoch spoke about that as well, and they dwell, they're stuck to the earth. And they were used, you know, they were born in the shell of a body, you know, as a giant, and they desire to have a body. They possess animals, they possess human beings. In fact, most of the world leaders today have spirits that are in them. I guess you could say they're from the undead. And when they die as well, whether they're princes or presidents or whatever, then those spirits don't have that body to walk around in anymore. Some of them will stand around and, and people will say, oh, it's a ghost. And it's, it's just the spirit that had possessed whomever, you know, that's just lingering and uh, waiting to take on another body. Or they're, they're just given advertisement that, oh, there's life after death. You never die. When you die, you go to heaven and hell and purgatory or whatever. And that's completely untrue as well as you can... See down here, there's this 144,000 do not go to heaven. Nobody goes there except for the wedding feast. And I put this video out, our king led me to bring, on January 25th, 2020. Please watch it because this video plays a key part in what actually had saved my life here last night. Personally, I'd have rather just kept on sleeping, you know, and not had to worry anymore, but that's how it works. The Holy Malachim have brought me back more than once, I'll tell you, you know. I've been electrocuted so bad that the hair on my arms and hands was, you know, smoking. I've been drowned a few times, you know, and I just keep getting brought back. It's like, don't I ever get any rest? I must be wicked. I can't get no rest here. But we all have a Holy Malik. Every one of us, regardless how sin sick one is you have to have a reliable witness as well for you to be actually put to death that's why you've got at least two demons around writing everything down about you but you also have one that's righteous you know one righteous holy malik you got at least two angels you know or the minions of the angels the minions of satan and there's a holy malik at least one holy malik so with that, let's further into the dream I had. When I got to the second opening after the first one, the trash can come up and was doing its little wiggle thing in the air. You know, I just simply rebused. I just simply tested and tried the spirit in my dream. And the thing is, I knew I was dreaming, but, you know, I couldn't wake up from it. And normally, most every dream I have, I can wake up from, okay, at any time I want. I know when things are right and I know when things are wrong. And if I'm in a situation that I see sin is on the horizon, I usually hightail it out of that dream. I wake up 30, 40 times a night anyway when I sleep because I toss and turn on the bed all night. I get very sore from laying on my sides. And laying on my back is very difficult. I never could do it until this year. I've been able to lay on my back a little bit after I had busted it. But there I was. I was dreaming. I, I went past the first. I got rid of the first devils that had the trash can and I'm walking toward the second opening to another larger room that people were in and the garbage can come up in the air again I did the same thing I tested I tried the spirit dropped the trash can and it, it was gone well as I walked down to the next opening the trash can jumped up and just went down the hall real quick well I, it wasn't a hall it was a big open room but it went across over the floor 
to the end room on the left-hand side, and it went into the room. And I said, all right, you little sucker, I'm coming. And when I walked into the room, it was basically an ambush, okay? It was, the garbage can was sitting there on the floor, right in the middle of it, and I, I'm getting goose chills right now. I mean, it was uh, quite severe when I walked into the room. It was like my hair almost went into an afro, I guess you could say. Everything sticking out, you know, from the goosebumps I had that were on my goosebumps goosebumps. It felt like there was ice flowing through my veins. And I'm trying to wake up. I, I'm, I'm trying to talk, okay? I'm trying to rebuke those that were in the room because I know there were many, many, many of them in there. It was a trap for me. And I started feeling these hands grab a hold of me. And they were like bands of iron. When they grabbed a hold of me, there was no way I had humanly strength to be able to pull away from these ones. And I'm trying to test and try these spirits. And nothing's coming out my mouth. I'm like, not even a... a squeal a squawk nothing was coming out of my mouth and i knew i was in trouble i really was it's like oh boy and at the same time that i'm trying to talk but nothing's coming out i'm i'm froze stiff and i've got these devils these angels these wicked and evil spirits or whatever they were pulling on me and i just know they're gonna rip off my arms my legs leave me there bleeding until i'm done and I'm thinking at the same time, well, this can be all right. It's going to hurt like hell. I know that, but it's going to be over and I'm going to rest. And I'm thinking in my mind as I'm sleeping, trapped in my dream. It's like, well, I know Yahshua is living in me. And yet I cannot call on him. And I'm trying to struggle and I just can't budge. I, I, there's no way I could move. So I kept on trying to speak and finally a little squ uh, uh, <laughs> just, just a little squeak started coming out and I was trying to call out for Yahshua to send his holy Malachim you know to take care of these wicked and evil ones to bring them to an early judgment but I didn't have the opportunity it was a horrible feeling I was totally trapped I couldn't wake up they were tearing me apart they were just pulling on me so bad and I knew my time was over because I couldn't speak, you know. Even though I was praying inside for Yahshua to send his holy Malachim, and I don't know how long this was that it took place, but it seemed a very long time. I was froze solid from the frequencies of all these wicked and evil ones that were put off on me. You know, even in the book of Job, it talked about how the hair and such stands up, you know, when a uh, wicked and evil spirit comes around. And you multiply that by, I don't know how many were there. All I know is that these guys were powerful, okay? And the guys out there playing with these paranormal things, you know, Ouija boards, trying to communicate with the dead. That's all they have to do because they become owned by the devil and her minions when they do these things. When you ask a devil to do something for you... Well, you become property of that devil, okay? There's no way around it. You should be rebuking these. You shouldn't be wanting to talk to the dead. Do you take counsel of the dead? You should not do so. If you trust in Yahshua only and, and not the Jesus, you have a defense. And there I was standing. I thought I finally met my match because I've said many times, you know, when I walk into a room, these devils flee, but they had a trap set for me, I'll tell you, and they took over my dreams, and this is what a lot of these orbs and things, I've written to many people that have these orbs, and they're talking, you know, and they're flying around the room right past them, flying through their hat or whatever, and they're talking about how they had a dream from the Jesus, or God came and gave them, and I'm telling them, look, you know, did you test and try those spirits? Because those orbs are not holy Malachim. They're certainly not righteous spirits. They're certainly not Father Yahweh nor Yahshua, nor any that they deem as being righteous. Those orbs are putting on a show. And the show that they're putting on is that they're supposed to be life after death. Well, the thing is, these spirits are immortal. When a man dies, that's it. When a woman dies, that's it. When a child dies, that's it. They don't go to heaven, hell, or purgatory. 
It's just like their batteries have been taken out of them and they, they cease to exist other than turning into dust and becoming fertilizer for root crops or whatever. But they don't further live. Now, if they had a devil in them, and most people do, you know, they don't realize it. Most of those that are out there just loving the Jesus and loving the gods and everything else, they don't have Holy Spirit, but they think that the imposters that are in them is the Holy Spirit. But they're not plugged in. They don't keep the laws and the commandments. They don't do these things. So if they don't, they have no hookup with the Holy Spirit. But if they're eating pork or if they're out fornicating or lying, keeping Christmas or Easter, things of this sort, they've opened the door for the dead to come in, you know? And when they die, the dead that were in them no longer has a host. So the dead still wander out there and people confuse those beings as they were the spirits of the ghosts of mankind and they're not totally different please consider these things listen to this video down here the 144,000 do not go to heaven because when you die you are knowing nothing you can't praise you can't curse you can't cuss you can't do anything in the grave except for decompose then some people don't even do that you know they they get mummified or whatever but you know nothing in the grave. And our king himself said he's going to come and raise the dead. Meaning mankind, those of men and women and children that had died, our king is coming to raise them from their slumber, from their sleep. If they was already in heaven, hell, or purgatory, our king would have been a bald-faced liar, would he not? Why would our king say he's going to come and raise the people from the dead if they're already in heaven, hell, or purgatory? What in the world would our king lie to us about that for? Well, he didn't, okay? This is the teachings of men that didn't have Holy Spirit to begin with, and they're out there teaching words from the Scripture, Twisting as they go, they know how to speak these things to lubricate your wallet, to pull out your money, to pay them for their deceptions that they bring to you, you know? And I, I'd stop paying these lying suckers. So anyway, there I was in the room, and all these angels and all these wicked and evil spirits, the demons had a hold of me, boy, I'll tell you what. And I couldn't speak, I couldn't move. It was like I was frozen. I couldn't wake up. I knew if I could wake up, I can get away from them and rebuke whatever spirit it was that was holding me bondage in my sleep. But it couldn't do it, you know. And I'm praying inside. It's like, oh, Yahshua, you know, I could sure use some holy malachim down here, you know. Just say the word and these suckers will flee. And then all of a sudden, what took place, just as I felt my my sockets and stuff starting to give loose as they was yanking on me all of a sudden and mind you i've been you know in the bed there for you know at least uh three four hours before the dream came on me and i had been sleeping out in the lounge chair before i came back but right at that moment when i was crying out inside and the little squeak <laughs> you know i couldn't say a word because i don't know if you've ever been I guess you could say terrified, because I, I truly was terrified, but I wasn't scared, you know. I was, it was the frequency that they had set off. It's like being startled, you know, when someone throws a firecracker behind you and it says, you know, to fear Yahweh only, well, all of a sudden, bang, the firecracker goes off. Well, sure, you get startled, you know, but that don't mean you're fearing something other than Father Yahweh. I didn't fear these devils. These devils normally flee from me, but they gathered together for their feast, you know, and, and they was going to eat me up. I'll tell you what, I, I really thought that was the last that anyone's going to see of me. And I was all right with that, you know, other than the pain I was already feeling. I was all right with not waking up again. Believe you me, that, that would have been fine. But it was like such a terror that went through my entire body with all these unseen hands. I didn't see any of these fellas when I was growing up. I used to see them all the time. But I didn't see any of them. All I had was their hands on me. 
they was violating me and I was going to rebuke them pretty heavily, you know, but I didn't have the opportunity because all of a sudden, right when I felt my joints pulling out and my, my hips, the legs coming out of socket, it felt like, and it's like, you know, and I was just ready for it to, you know, I was ready to be like what Satan wanted to do with Kifa, you know, rend him like a rag, and that's what I felt like. I was like a rag in their hand. Human strength is nothing over spiritual strength. You can believe in me that. But all of a sudden, just before I knew my end was coming, this is what I heard. Hello, everybody. Uh, there's a question. There, there's this belief that's out there, and I, I'm going to make this video about heaven, hell, and purgatory and how it's a lie okay that's what it is it's a lie <laughs> so anyway it got to the point where it was about two minutes into this video and i'm i didn't turn it on the the video the computer's off okay shut down there but all of a sudden that came on and as loud as it was there it was really loud when it came on i mean i was afraid the neighbors were going to hear it and there's thick walls here but i was still stuck in the dream see when when the words started coming from the video i was still stuck in the dream and they're still trying to tear me to pieces trying to tear me asunder but all of a sudden there was less and less and less of them okay they started fleeing when they started hearing my voice and i could hear me I was on the bed there, you know, and I still just couldn't come out of the dream. I don't, it was two minutes and some odd seconds that the video played before I was finally able to break loose from the hold or whatever it was that had a hold on me, and I woke up. And the thing was, I know that it was a Malik that plays with my lamp. It seems like the Malik goes ahead and it clicks on areas, you know, makes the light bright or dim, you know, to add emphasis to some of the words that our king is leading me to say. And I got no problem with Holy Malik doing that, but I was shown, it was knowing to me that it wasn't the lamp that was being played with this time, but my computer. And because of the Holy Malik there, he did rescue me from these, I know for certain that those that came out of my dream, out of my head, wherever they were programming their stuff into me, that they were being gathered up and brought to an early judgment. So after I woke up, it was about 1226, but I know it had to have been around 1224 when the computer came on, and the light that was coming off the screen illuminated the whole uh, it was something i've never seen on this computer before i mean the voice the volume was up so high i can't make these videos play as loud as what was coming when the computer turned on by itself well the computer didn't turn on by itself i believe it was the holy malik that turned it on now i don't know if you're seeing things or not in the background you know but i've seen a few times where the light has been blinking but I can't see it out my peripheral vision here. The camera's picking it up, and it's illuminating the whole bed. It, it, the whole bed will get brighter, or it will get dimmer, along with the backdrop on the wall there. And as I showed you earlier, it's just a regular lamp. The smaller one that was on the stand there also would do the same things, you know. And I put a new cord on the bigger lamp that I have, that I'm using now. But anyway, after I did get out of bed, you know, I, I rebuked, you know, any wicked and evil spirits that are here. I asked our king to send his holy malachim to take any of them away that had caused these things to come to pass for an early judgment. I said my prayers. I prayed for you all. And then I got up and I went out and I sat in my lounger, kind of bewildered, you know. I mean, I was feeling pretty sore from being almost torn apart there, you know, I mean... Like I say, I do believe that I would have been dead in my sleep had they had the power ganging up on me as they did all of them, you know. And they bum-rushed me, boy, I'll tell you what. But anyway, I went out there to the lounger and, uh, you know, I got me a drink of water and drank it down, had a couple glasses of water because I really felt dehydrated. 
it was quite a stressful dream. I didn't get much sleep and I was pretty tired. So what I did was I went to my Roku and I put on the only type of ham that I do play with at all is slapped ham. <laughs> yeah, I think the guy's name is Colin there, you know, and I do watch slapped ham because there's a lot of unusual things that take place. And, you know, a lot of times I'll go and I'll make comments for people that are really freaked out about certain things. I'll give them advice because I don't know of anybody on the earth today that's seen as many dead as I have in my past. There's got to be a reason for it, you know, so I try to explain to them to give them some sort of comfort. And you'd be amazed how many think that, you know, it's the Jesus or the God or their angels, you know, and it most likely is, you know, but it certainly isn't Father Yahweh or Yahshua. It certainly isn't Father Yahweh through Yahshua, nor is it the holy Malachim that do these cheap parlor tricks. That's what the orbs and things are for. They're out there doing parlor tricks. And as stated before, I believe I know of two times that our king came to me personally. Once I saw him face to face, and we're talking like give or take 40 years ago, he doesn't come on a weekly basis face to face before me, but he, he does send Holy Spirit because I practice keeping the give or take 613 laws. And the more you practice these laws, the more they're written on your inward parts, in your heart, your mind, your every fiber in your DNA, the more wisdom, the more understanding our king can feed to you by and through that electric conduit, you know, speaking as like a similitude of the electricity that runs through everyone's houses except for the atheists that don't want no electric in their house. They don't want no Holy Spirit whatsoever to hook up with. And everyone knows when you plug something in, when you can plug it in, then you can power up, okay? I brought out... A, now, we did bring out some videos where I had depicted that the cell phone, you know, the hookups to the grid and everything, the cell towers and all, is a similitude of Holy Spirit. It's like if you've got a cell phone and yet you haven't paid your bill or whatever, you can open it up all you want. It'll turn on. Uh-oh. Well, normally it would turn on, but I, I don't use this thing. So uh, the battery's dead. I'm going to have to plug it in. Uh, it kind of took away from what I wanted to display there, you know. So uh, the, it would have went, you know, and, and everything turned on. And I'd say, well... If you're not hooked up to, well, if you haven't, you know, paid your dues or whatever to the company or whatever for the use of the cell towers, the Holy Spirit to come in here, well, all it does is turn on. You can't call no one. You can't do anything. You could use it for, you know, maybe a fishing sinker or something, but. Other than that, you know, it's not going to do you any benefit. The same thing with the electric conduit through one's house. If you don't have the right plug-in, one of my daughters one time took one of those barbed wire nails. And what they are, they're a big U nail, you know, a U. <laughs> and you put it around the wire and you nail it into the pole. Well, she took it and stuck it into an electric outlet and it blew the whole house out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the breakers all went up, boom. <laughs> so she tried going in through a back door. So the back door don't work either. You have to have the proper plug-in. And the only way you can acquire Holy Spirit is by keeping the laws and the commandments. And if you're not, in the Jesus and God and the angels are coming and telling you things, well, if they're telling you that you're walking right and all you got to do is believe, they're liars. Satan is the mother of all lies. Of course, Scripture wants to say the father of all lies, but Satan is a female. I believe it was Michelangelo that painted the top of the Sistine Chapel with where it showed Satan as a serpent, half serpent, in the Garden of Eden, wrapped around the tree. The bottom half of her was a snake. The top half, you could see her boobies and everything, okay? It was definitely a female. A few hundred years ago, they knew Satan was a female, but it's just by mistranslations in scripture that made her to be a male. But it doesn't matter. She's probably a hermaphrodite too. I don't know. 
It's just that angels can come as anything they want to come as. They can come looking like a cat or a dog. They can come looking like a tree or a pencil. Holy Malachim can do the same thing. And scripture tells you not to forget hospitality because you could be entertaining a holy malik. And, and most likely, the holy malik would end up looking, you know, as though it was a, a human being. And there are scriptures that actually showed these things that the holy malachim were doing. Daniel seen one, you know. I actually saw a holy malik one time. There was a fight in the trailer that I had. It was my... It was my men's cave, you know, that I had down in Texas. And there were two people there that I thought were brothers, but they had some bad blood between them. Next thing you know, they're fighting, and I'm like rebuking them, saying, Hey, man, you don't fight inside the man cave, you know. You don't fight on my property. If you got a problem, you both need to get the hell out of here. You don't carry on with any violence here. Next thing you know, one of them's picking up a screwdriver wanting to stick the other and i said oh man i says father yahweh through yahshua yahshua send the holy malik and stop this please next thing you know i seen this leg it was a beautiful leg it was huge it was probably about that big around and it had a sandal that was like mid-calf laced down to the feet the most beautiful foot i ever seen and that foot came down on the ankle bone of one of the fellas there and it crushed his ankle. I mean, his foot went out to the side. I mean, it's like his foot was like this, but then the foot went like this, and, and the leg bone hit the ground. ka -tunk. He's like, oh, did you see that? I says, I saw that. I says, I called on the Holy Malik, and he took you out. I said, and you're blessed. He didn't take your life. Well, they quit fighting. We got him into his truck. I wasn't going to do anything for the guy, you know, other than pray for him. You know, he deserved it. He got what was coming to him. I'm sorry I had to call the Holy Malachim, but these guys wanted to kill each other in my man cave, you know, on my property. And I'm not for violence. I'm not for war. If you can't talk things out, I don't want to talk about it. Otherwise, I'll talk with you, you know, till the cows come home. And I don't have any cows, but I don't go for the violence. But that was a foot of a holy malik that I saw. Most beautiful foot i ever seen in my life. And it just crushed that man's ankle. So I prayed for the man, and he had to go to the hospital, and they put in all sorts of screws and pins and everything. And within a month's time, he was walking on that foot again. So I know the power of prayer. I know the power of the holy malachim. All these wicked and evil spirits, you know, they have power... That these poor fellows out there, you know, with the Ghostbusters and paranormal investigations and all that, haven't even a clue the power they have. Here they're coaxing them. Oh, can you move the paper clip? Can you blow the paper? Can you just move it? I, I know you're pretty weak and everything because you haven't eaten your batteries today, you know. Well, what did they do for batteries and power? before the batteries were invented. You know, these spirits ain't sucking batteries out to get energy. They can't die, they're immortal, you know. They've got power and they can rend you to pieces like a rag, okay? They can rip you up in little pieces if they were so allowed to do so. In most cases, the Holy Malachim won't allow them to do so, even if you don't know Father Yahweh through his righteous son. Even if you never read the scriptures, there are many instances where the Holy Malachim will not allow the devils to destroy you. And they'll intervene without you even knowing. You won't see it. You'll just wonder, how did I survive that, you know? <laughs> Fled from a whole tribe of headhunters or something, you know, and you escape. <laughs> Indiana Jones or whatever. How did I escape? And nowadays, you see it very prevalent, you know, where houses are being swept away in rivers and everything else. It weren't rivers before, you know, and then they get out and they want to give praises to Mother Nature, you know, and all the gods and everything. But our Heavenly Father doesn't want any to perish. Neither does our righteous King want any to perish. He's given us plenty of time right now. You're going to see the 144,000 gathered. And you'll see Micah 4 and Isaiah chapter 2 coming to pass and so many other things going on. And I'll tell you, without the Holy Malachim at our side, we'd have been destroyed long ago. Last night, you know, 
I was saved by the Holy Malachi, of course. You know, I thank our king for him, and I thank the Malach, you know, but I don't pray to the Malach. I thank them for being so unkind as to save me so I could wake up in the morning, you know, and, and keep on with this meager existence. But don't forget, we also have Pentecost coming up this 16th of May. From the 15th of May, that's Sabbath at sundown, to the end of 16th day's sun, when the sun sets, will be Pentecost. I hope to see y'all there, but more so does our king. So with that, my friends, I love y'all. I do enjoy watching slapped ham. Okay, that's the only kind of ham that I do. I do know the enemy. You know, I'm not fearful of the enemy. But when they pile up against me, you know, sometimes I just was totally defenseless where they usually will flee they lured me in boy i tell you so i don't know exactly what's coming up but our king does let me have dreams sometime to let me see what is around the corner and of course the situation will never be anything like the dream for all the times i've had such things take place it's going to be some other sort of situation but i do know that there's going to be a battle a spiritual battle that's going to take place so I hope y'all have been asking for forgiveness, forgiving one another, you know, repenting of our sins, repenting of your sins, and turning your heart and mind over to our Heavenly Father through His righteous Son. You can't go to the Father. And hopefully because you go to church and everything and everyone prays to God, you know, they all, they all pray to God. Well, if you think you're honoring the God by going around your Jesus to get to him. Well, one time I was in a cult where we prayed to Father Yahweh, you know, and that is his name, of course, but we denied the Son. And there's a scripture that talks about how we are to honor the Son. The Father wants us to honor the Son as we honored the Father. So if you're going after the God and you're honoring the God, well, when you come out to find out that the true name was Yahshua, just like the Catholics here recently had removed every name, or I should say every time the name Yahweh was in any of their literature, as well as Yahshua, their names were stricken from it. They censored out their names. They got these black lines through the name of Father Yahweh, and they put on the chiefest deity of the Canaanite pantheon's name, as well as the Phoenician pantheon which was L, translated into English as God, okay? So if God is coming to you and giving you visions and dreams, well, it's the Canaanite pantheon calling out for you. And God's son <laughs> is Baal or Baal. El's son is Baal, also translated into English as Lord. So if your Lord is coming to you, you're the Jesus, who is the Lord, you know, just a different name for it, not even 500 years old is Jesus, they are, but you don't want them to come around. So please pray about these things. Get away from the lords and the gods. Time is getting short. I'd sure love to see that great earthquake come for the 16th. I don't think it will, but it could. And we could be gathered at that time and Holy Spirit poured out. And then all nations flow. But until that time, you've got a great head start. If you'll just listen to these words and the other videos, uh, you know, as well as this one. Figure out who it is that you do worship. You know, there in John or Yachanan, chapter 4, our Messiah was talking to a woman by the well. And he said, you don't even know who you worship. He says, neither will them in the future. Not exactly them words, but you put those words to it when you read it. And you'll see very clear that he was saying that in these last days, the world wouldn't have our Heavenly Father they'd be worshiping those that they do not know, thinking it was the Father. The Father wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. And what is spirit? It's the give or take 613 laws that define how to keep the Ten Commandments. And what is truth? Spirit and truth? Truth is the give or take 613 laws that pertain to you that define how to keep those Ten Commandments and the rest of the every living word, just like Matthew 4, 4 tells you to do. Our Messiah said you can't live by him alone. 
You can't live by bread alone. But if you want to live, you have to live by the every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father, including Pentecost that's coming up. And with that, I said too much. I'm going to get this here uploaded as quickly as possible because I'm rather tired. It was a very stressful night. Sabbath's coming pretty soon, so hopefully it'll be posted for Sabbath. And with that, I, I truly do love y'all. Please wake up, people. Bye.